Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope everyone's doing well and safe. I'm starting a short video series on one of an important topic that everybody needs to understand from AWS from security perspective, which is AWS guard duty. So in this lecture or in this entire series, we will talk more about guard duty, why we need guard duty, what exactly guard duty is all about, how you can use guard duty in a better way to protect your entire cloud infrastructure or network infrastructure. Now, the series is divided into number of multiple videos where obviously we'll start with the conceptual part. I have included Security Hub and AWS Network Firewall too. Already done a video on Security Hub long back. So I'll share the playlist of my security, uh, you know, video tutorial where I have done Security Hub, AWS Config and Inspector. So those videos are also helpful from AWS security tool that will help you to understand how you can protect your environment, how you can assess your environment continuously, like continuous monitoring. AWS network firewall, we will not talk much from the practical perspective, but yes, uh, I will tell you the conceptual part of AWS network firewall. This is another important firewall service, which acts as an IPS, which is intrusion prevention system help us to protect our environment. I will talk about in detail once we get there. Now workflow, again, once the concept is done, we will understand the guard duty workflow, security hub workflow and network firewall as well. Finally, we will jump into our practical demo where I will show you how you can enable guard duty, how you can enable network firewall and security hub. Finally, we will end up our entire session with three different, uh, you know, production use cases. One, integration of security hub and guard duty to remediate the detection. So for example, any kind of malicious activity is happening, how you can use guard duty as a finder to ingest that into security hub and help us to reduce or, you know, like remediate that particular security risk. Then we have uh, another use case from, uh, you know, from production perspective, how you can use network firewall to help your net network with malware attack. So this is more of a proxy kind of an environment where you might have seen Nginx in most of the industry, Nginx is using as a proxy where uh, if you have to go to the internet, then the traffic will get filtered. If you're downloading something from the internet, then the traffic has to be filtered out first. If there is some, you know, uh, malware kind of a file or ransomware is getting downloaded, it will help you to block that and allow not to download that particular file to help us the environment. Another uh, use case is like how you can block suspicious activity with AWS network firewall and guard duty. So in this lecture, uh, we will uh, take a look into the entire workflow and how you can integrate network firewall and guard duty. Finally, we'll go to the conclusion section. Now this is not one video for all. This is a number of videos. This is a series on guard duty. So let's start this particular series. So AWS guard duty is intelligent threat detection system. Basically understanding the environment and tracking all the threat, detecting all the threat, what is happening into the world of AWS cloud. They call it as cloud centric IDS and what exactly IDS is intrusion detection system. In, in a like brief way, I would say IDS is basically your device or a software application that monitors your network environment, your systems for any kind of malicious or a bad activity or any kind of policy violation. So for example, you are running an environment and suddenly you find out like some kind of bad activity started happening into your environment, some kind of an attack, right? Or a policy violation, then IDS will help you to detect that particular violation. Any intrusion activity or violation is typically reported either to an administrator or collected centrally using security information or event management system, which is basically SIM tool like Splunk, right? Or Loki. So these are the tools that uh, we use to collect every kind of an activity like intrusion activity from an IDS and submit to a certain central detection system, right? central information system, you can say that the same way guard duty works. So within guard duty, what it does, 
there is a criteria of uh, having guard duty running into the world of AWS cloud. It reads your uh, network workflow log, it reads your cloud trail log, and based on that, what kind of activity is happening into your system, it will dump all the findings within the guard duty console. And also you can send those uh, data to the SIM tool as well, but you have to create certain set of rules, certain set of designing needs to be, you know, uh, created for uh, integration of guard duty with different set of tools. But that is not required as per best of my understanding because guard duty dashboard by default provides all the findings and you can send all those findings into a central hub, which is security hub for AWS. So you don't need a third party SIM tool to work on this. Depend upon, you know, company to company, how they are working in the backend. Guard duty continuously monitor your AWS account, instances, container workload, users, storage for potential threats. As mentioned earlier, this is kind of an IDS or like detecting all the threats. They have extended their support to instances, container workloads. Container workload was not there earlier when they provisioned this. This was like launched almost uh, in 2017. It's, it's a very old service, but they are, you know, uh, enhancing the usage of guard duty across the environment. Now, remember one thing, guard duty is regional is nature, right? So every region guard duty has to be enabled. But if you have a multiple accounts of AWS within your organization, you can uh, dump all the findings in one of the account as part of the best practices. I'll talk about that while we will be going to do the practical demo. Expose the threats quickly using anomaly detection, machine learning, behavioral modeling and threat intelligence feed for AWS and leading the third parties. Mitigating threats early by initiate automated responses. Now, just one thing to note over here, guard duty is just taking the data out of all the logs, all the system, all the network and dumping that particular finding into the guard duty console. This is intelligent threat detection. It is not preventing that particular threats to get blocked for your environment, right? This is kind of an IDS detection system. This is not a prevention system. IPS is a prevent, uh, intrusion prevention system, which we will talk about with AWS Network Firewall. So I hope this clears a lot in terms of the conceptual part of AWS guard duty. Why this is required? Because we need some system to show us the threats which is coming to our network or system, right? So that's why guard duty is required. Okay, let's talk about security hub. Now security hub, automate the AWS security checks and centralize the security alerts. So whatever you are getting into the guard duty findings, you can send those findings into AWS security hub and within AWS security hub, we get provision to, you know, remove those threat with the help of either writing custom script or Lambda function. Now AWS cloud security hub, is a cloud security posture management service that performs security best practices check, aggregates alerts, and enable automated remediation. So, you know, like this is a centralized hub for all your uh, data coming from guard duty, inspector, config. We can integrate everything over here. Now, continuously monitor your AWS account instances, container workload, user storage for potential threats. Detect deviation from security best practices with a single click. So, you know, you know like, uh, for example, if you want everything to be automated, yes, you can use Lambda function to remediate the potential risk. Plus, with the help of uh, CloudWatch event bridge, you can create a rule that will, you know, continuously uh, monitoring the environment and triggering the Lambda function if there is a threat to rem remediate the issue. Automatically aggregate the security findings in a standard data format from AWS and partner services and accelerate mean time to resolution with automated response time and remediation action. So this is more of a same kind of, uh, you know, uh, the response that what we are getting, we are getting the remediation action console. We are getting a consolidated console within 
where you can see all the findings at one place then uh, you can automate a lot of different responses to secure your AWS account from security perspective as well as from your account perspective. Now I will share the link of AWS Security Hub, the practical demo that I had done in uh, past. So please go through that. Now finally we are on to our third concept which is AWS Network Firewall. Another important service I would say, I guess this was launched to in 2020 or 2021, mostly in 2020 what I remember last. Uh, one of a good service act as an IPS prevention system, intrusion prevention system basically for an active traffic flow to inspect your traffic so that you can identify and block the vulnerability exploit using signature based detection. Now AWS Network Firewall is a managed services. You don't have to manage the entire firewall, what we used to do in the data center. This is totally managed by AWS in the backend and we are just using that service. Easy to deploy, essential uh, network protection for all your VPCs. Now obviously everything starts from the network is starting from the VPC. That's where you design all your network component and then on below that you go to the instances, security firewalls and everything comes into picture. This works, this helps you to protect your VPC, the, your entire network stack. The service can be set up in just few clicks, scales automatically with your network traffic so you don't have to worry about deploying and managing any infrastructure. Now I have used this one with one of my client and they generate a lot of data like millions of data uh, per you know per day kind of uh, what I remember because they initiated that traffic uh, last year when I was working with them. And literally I haven't seen any impact on the network firewall that it is not working at all. Obviously this is also regional in nature. If your region is down, we cannot do anything in that perspective. Now AWS network firewall is flexible enough uh, from the rules perspective. So you have to, you know, design certain set of rules to define at the firewall that will give you a fine gain control over your network traffic, such as blocking the outbound SMB request to prevent spread of the malicious attack. Another important point to make over here is you can use uh, AWS network firewall where you can create a rule that will filter all the traffic based upon the URL. So for example, if you're trying to download something from the malware uh, site, so it will, if you have uh, created a rule where you are saying, hey, from the malware site, this is the URL and if you're trying to download any kind of a pattern, it will block that particular service right away. That IP will get blocked. So you will not find anything get downloaded onto your system like malware or ransomware. AWS Network Firewall includes features that provide protection from a common network threats. That's, uh, so we have a lot of predefined rules within Network Firewall that will help you to understand and I will show you that as well. AWS Network Firewall also offers web filtering that, so that you can stop the bad URLs as I mentioned. Monitor the fully qualified domain names too. So you can blacklist the IP address, you can blacklist the range, you can also blacklist the FQDN. Now one of the important factor uh, what I know with IDS or IPS, so one kind of attack is basically uh, we have uh, third party agencies, right? So if you want to, uh, they control all, not control, I would say, they maintain the list of IP addresses, the hacker IP addresses, the uh, from where the malicious attacks happens. So most of the companies, uh, what they do, they get in touch with their uh, third party agencies who take care of the security part. They get the list of IP address, the malicious IP address or range, and they then blacklist those IP ranges within guard duty. So we have that option as well or within your network firewall too. Or you can deny everything from your network ACL as well. That will be your at VPC level, VPC subnet level. So those kind of, uh, you know, restrictions or those kind of uh, uh, activity can be performed with the help of all the security measures within AWS. In next lecture, we will try to understand the flow of all these services, what AWS is promising to us, how the workflow happens for each of these services. And finally, we will jump into our practical demo. So I'll see you in next lecture. 
have a nice day bye bye